Well, hey guys. So this is a video I've been wanting to do for some time, and that is my skincare recommendations for folks who are on Accutane or otherwise known as isotretinoin. Now I have a video all about isotretinoin brand name Accutane, so make sure you check that out. But many of you have asked me for my skincare product recommendations. If you're not familiar with this medication, it is approved for and used to treat acne. It may be prescribed for some other things, but major side effects of this medication involve your skin being incredibly dry. So the products that I'm going to recommend to you guys in today's video are really excellent for the situation that you're gonna be going through with dryness of the skin and mucous membranes. With starting Accutane, your skin's gonna get really dry because Accutane shrinks the sebaceous oil gland and reduces sebum production. Sebum is that oil that makes our skin feel greasy and contributes to acne but it also lubricates the surface of our skin and a lot of other mucous membrane surfaces have sebaceous glands or a variant of sebaceous glands that keep those areas hydrated and functional and they too are gonna be affected by this medication and you're gonna experience dryness, for example, in your eyes. Now, because your skin is gonna make less oil, you really have to break up with some of your prior skincare practices, particularly if they were aimed at doing things to your skin to alleviate greasiness or the sensation of oily skin. That's no longer gonna be an issue for you. You're taking a pill that does that for you. So you kind of have to revamp your skincare to avoid drying out and irritating your skin, not only on your face, but on your body as well really dial back on the use of soaps and cleansers on the body. There is not going to be that need anymore to degrease your skin. A lot of people with oily skin, particularly who have acne on the chest and back, they are used to lathering those areas up, but there's really not a need to do that anymore. It's gonna dry them out too much. And you may have been using a harsher soap prior to starting this medication. So my recommendation for body cleansing is to really be strategic with your body washing, really just direct a small amount of lather to areas of the body that are visibly soiled. So if you work outdoors, this will be more relevant to you or to areas of the body where you have skin on skin contact under your armpits, under the breasts and women in the abdominal folds and between the thighs. These are areas that are prone to bacterial colonization and need a little bit more attention when it comes to hygiene. But otherwise, there's no need to use soap on your legs, your torso, your arms. This really can dry out your skin even more than the Accutane. And that can lead to a lot of dryness and irritation and cause rashes. The soap that I recommend for the body is actually a non-soap and it's a bar form. I recommend the CeraVe Hydrating um, Bar Soap or I recommend the Vanny Cream Cleansing Bar. Both of these are excellent choices for people who need some body cleansing while on Accutane. They're very gentle and they're great for these particular areas. And the reason that I like the bar, that they're a bar soap, is that people tend to use less soap when they use a bar. They tend to be heavy handed with pouring out body washes and that can that can lead to over soaping the skin and just drying out your skin more. So those are the, that's what I recommend for body washing. The number of times a day you bathe, also you should consider reducing. If you're somebody who showers in the morning and then again at night, you may wanna reduce that to just once a day. Make sure you limit your showers to no more than 10 minutes and use lukewarm water rather than hot or extremely cold water. Extremes of temperature can aggravate the skin barrier and that's definitely not something that you want when you're going through Accutane. So keep the showers really short. When it comes to cleansing your face, the same holds true. You really wanna minimize the number of times that you wash your face a day, really just once a day in the evening to remove pollutants, dirt, makeup that have settled on your skin throughout the day. Stay away from cleansers that are marketed for oily skin. They tend to have surfactants in them that are degreasing and that's the last thing that you want in this stage. I recommend a gentle non-soap cleanser, one that I love is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gentle Cleansing Lotion for sensitive skin. This is free of added fragrance. And if I haven't already said it, which I don't think I have, 
make sure your skincare products are free of fragrance. Read the ingredients, it's very important because when your skin is going through Accutane, it's a lot more susceptible to developing allergies and irritation to things, and fragrance is a very common allergen and irritant. So make sure you avoid that. This is really nice if you're going through Accutane because it's got polyoxamer 188 in it. This is a compound that actually can kind of cushion the skin cells. It's very gentle and will just help in removing the dirt and makeup from throughout the day, but not overly strip out your skin barrier. So I love that. Another one that I strongly recommend is CeraVe Hydrating Creamy Cleanser. Very gentle, non-soap cleanser, wonderful. And then a third one that I love, it's a little on the more, it's more on the expensive side, is the Aven Extremely Gentle Cleansing Lotion. The reason that I like this is not only is it a non-soap cleanser, but it has an ingredient in it that acts as a, has antifungal and anti-inflammatory properties. And that can be helpful just in overall soothing the skin and reducing redness and irritation. So that is also a great one. For those of you in the UK, I recommend the Waitrose Pure Face Wash Natural Care. This is a very gentle cleanser. A viewer sent this to me, by the way. Thank you so much. But for those of you in the UK, this is a really good choice. For those of you throughout uh, Europe, though, who maybe this isn't available to you, I'm not sure if it is outside of the UK, but. Um, I recommend the DM Baliamed Sensitive Gel Cleanser. That is a wonderful one to, to use if you are going through isotretinoin. Speaking of washing your face, I mentioned that a part of that is removing makeup. This is a time to seriously consider breaking up with makeup. It, it can help because makeup, while nice in that it provides some camouflage for the dryness, redness, peeling, and whatnot, and, and the acne, it can be very drying and irritating, and your skin's gonna be very sensitive during this time period. So if you do use makeup, stick to uh, mineral-based makeups. They tend to be less irritating than uh, non-mineral makeups. I've always recommended the brand Dermablend. They make fantastic foundations, very acne-friendly. But given the current situation uh, with us having to distance from one another, now is the time to ditch your makeup, you guys. Nobody, who's watching? It, 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 this is a good time to, to kick the makeup. We'll save you money and help your skin. If you're going through Accutane, it can definitely help the journey out. A really important part of going through Accutane is greasing up. Remember, the medication has taken this away from you, which is a good thing for your acne, but your skin barrier actually still needs that oil. So you're gonna have to replenish it with a greasy moisturizing cream. In your past non-Accutane life, you may have chosen moisturizers that were oil-free or lotions, uh, really lightweight and felt more comfortable on your previously greasy skin. These are no longer going to be useful to you. You want to choose a cream. Vanny Cream brand you can't go wrong with. They are free of added fragrance. If you live in Canada, the company is called Cliniderm, but it's the same thing. So really a good one. And then for those of you guys outside of the U.S. in Europe, throughout Europe, QV Cream is another one that I strongly recommend. And then thirdly, um, CeraVe Moisturizing Cream in the Tub. These are all phenomenal for people going through Accutane, not only for your face, but for your body. I call these the heroes in blue. They are, they are the skin barrier heroes. They're amazing, really good for going through Accutane. Now, my tip for putting these on is after you step out of the shower, which remember, you're gonna keep short, you're not gonna be in there too long, you're not gonna be over soaping, and you're not gonna be using super scalding hot water. As soon as you step out, while your skin is still damp, go ahead and grease up them. That way, the occlusive ingredients in these moisturizers will help lock in that hydration and really help in addressing the, dry, the dryness of your skin. These are wonderful to use from head to toe on your face, your body. Many of you actually have told me that you use the CeraVe uh, moisturizing cream as a leave-in conditioner for your hair. So that's wonderful. This can go on your scalp as well, which you're gonna find is also gonna get a lot drier. Speaking of your scalp, you also will find that you don't have to shampoo your hair as frequently while you are on Accutane because it dries up the oil and so you don't have as oil, your hair is not as oily. If you had dandruff at one point, you might find that it's gonna improve a little bit uh, as a result of sebo stasis or reduction in that, in that oil production. 
but it can get dry. So CeraVe moisturizing cream can be used uh, to the scalp in the evening time as well. So those are great head to toe moisturizers. Again, put them on as soon as you step out of the shower while your skin is still damp and really take advantage of that little bit of water on your skin and really lock it in. It'll definitely help in addressing the skin barrier issue with the Accutane. Um, however, it might not be enough. So you may wanna to gravitate towards something that is more of a balm consistency. And by balm consistency, I mean even greasier than these moisturizing creams, more of an ointment. And this can be used on the face to really dry areas or on the body as well. Like if you have a lot of acne on your chest and back, that's really getting dried out and peeling and just uncomfortable. These are wonderful to use. Um, they are very greasy. One that I love is the Theraplex Barrier Balm. This is petrolatum based. And that's really the best, one of the best ingredients for you guys to consider using in this journey because petrolatum really seals in transepidermal water loss and addresses that skin barrier issue. It's not the devil. I have videos talking all about it. So Theraplex is a great one, as is plain old Vaseline, 100% petroleum jelly. Their original jelly, I think it's called. You have to be careful with Vaseline because they make a ton of products and some of their products have added fragrance or added flavorants, particularly their lip products. And that can that can aggravate your skin. So just stick to 100% plain petrolatum. Another great petrolatum based ointment that I love, it should come as no surprise to you guys, is the CeraVe Healing Ointment. You definitely can put this all over your face if you've got really dry, uh, aggravated patches. You may just wanna put it in certain spot areas. I love this because it, you know it's petrolatum based, so a great occlusive for sealing and transepidermal water loss, but it also has ceramides in it. Now these are components of our skin barrier that uh, become deficient with dry skin conditions and with age, and applying them exogenously in a moisturizer or ointment like this can actually help your skin barrier start to make more of its own ceramides so it's really a good good thing to consider the CeraVe moisturizing cream that I mentioned earlier has that as well so yeah that's really good Aquaphor is wonderful it's a petrolatum based ointment similar to these it does have lanolin in it l-a-n-o-l-i-n and that's an ingredient that some people can be allergic to so I tend to not choose that and I find personally it just irritates my skin so I don't use that one but it is a, a frequent recommendation and you know not, not a bad choice for what I'm talking about here for addressing those really dry peely patches and for those of you outside of the US in terms of an ointment I'm going to recommend to you Cetraben C-E-T-R-A-B-E-N ointment also a wonderful choice or QV makes a um makes an ointment as well. I'll list that down below for those of you guys outside of the US. But speaking of areas that need ointments or balms like these that are based in petrolatum, is gonna be your lips. So all of these that I've just mentioned are wonderful for your lips. That is so important when you're going through Accutane, your lips are really gonna become dry and peeling. And actually just putting on lip balm one or two times a day is not enough. You wanna put on a petrolatum based ointment multiple times a day because your lips are gonna go through a lot of peeling and irritation. Avoid putting on anything on your lips that has uh, flavorant in it, labeled as flavorant, or essential oils, fragrance. This is common in a lot of popular lip balms and lip products, and it actually can be very irritating. I recommend actually just sticking to plain 100% Vaseline petroleum jelly, or some of these other ointments that I've mentioned here will also work well. Unfortunately, a challenge with these is that they're all in large packaging and that's not so conducive to when you're on the go and given our current situation you want to reduce the number of times that you're touching your face so you know you may want to go to good old aquaphor because they have a stick form of aquaphor and some of these others they don't um, and a stick is nice because you're not physically touching your face that's really important for hand hygiene purposes especially in the current climate um, so I'll list that one down below for you guys as well, but that's a really good one for the lips. All right, I'm gonna move into sunscreen. Sunscreen is super important while you're going through Accutane. Just think of your skin at this period of your life while you're on this medication as very vulnerable. The medication ultimately is gonna make your skin stronger. It's gonna make a, it's gonna help the acne, that's the goal. 
but while it's working and while you're on it, your skin is vulnerable. It's almost like when you're building a house, and they've laid down the foundation, some of the framework, you know, you kind of have to enter with caution depending on what stage the house is being built in. Ultimately, it's gonna be a wonderful structure. And so I recommend uh, piggybacking off the lip chit chat carrying with you and using frequently an SPF lip balm. The best one for you guys, honestly, is the Vanny Cream Lip Protectant Sunscreen. For those of you guys outside of the US, I recommend the lip balm by Sunsense with sunscreen in it. I'll list that down below as well. But this is phenomenal. It's zinc based, so very low risk of irritation, very moisturizing, and it will help hydrate the lips, but also protect them from the sun. As far as sunscreen, this is important, you guys, to really make sure that you're wearing sunscreen and reapplying it throughout the day. Even during this time period when we're stuck indoors, sun comes through the windows, it can aggravate your acne, believe it or not. And also, to a certain extent, although we don't know fully, uh, some of the uh, light that is emitted onto our skin can also aggravate certain skin conditions, including hyperpigmentation. So I recommend protecting your skin with a broad spectrum sunscreen that is a mineral sunscreen and ideally is tinted. The nice thing about tinted mineral sunscreens is that they really do a good job protecting you against visible light that can contribute to hyperpigmentation, which is important as your acne is healing. You don't want it to heal with a dark mark. One that I always recommend to people in general, I mean, I, it's great for sensitive skin and it's great for going through Accutane, is Elta MD's UV Physical Broad Spectrum SPF 41 Lightly Tinted. This is moisturizing, but it dries with a nice matte finish, so it doesn't look greasy on the skin. But it's a nice balance between not drying greasy, but also being moisturizing, which you really need when you're going through Accutane. So I love this one. And then a more affordable alternative is the CeraVe Hydrating Sunscreen SPF 30 Sheer Tint. Sheer tint. Actually, this isn't that cheap. I love the way that this feels on the skin. It's super moisturizing, but it's not greasy. However, the tint on this does not work well for a lot of people. It's a little, for me, it's orangey. It looks like I used a, the wrong sunless tanner or something. <laughs> it's, it's too orangey for my skin. I reviewed it for you guys in depth, so if you wanna see what it looks like on the skin, check out if it might be right for you. I'll list the video down below. This is a wonderful option, really good option if you have acne. Acne, acne and you're going through Accutane, it's, dry, it's not drying, but it gives you nice protection and it also protects against those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. It just looks odd. A cruelty-free recommendation though, you can get this at Ulta, and it's great if you have darker skin, um, is the Coats Face Prime and Protect Tinted SPF 40. I have a sample here, um, but uh, I'll see if I can't find a bigger, a bigger bottle to screenshot on here so you guys can see it. This one, like the, like the Elta MD UV Physical, is moisturizing, but doesn't dry down, you know, it doesn't give a greasy, shiny look to the skin. Another one that's also great is Clear, C-L-E-U-R-E. -E. This too is cruelty-free. SPF 40 Tinted Sunscreen. This likewise, moisturizing, but not greasy. MD Solar Science also makes a mineral sunscreen that I've reviewed for you guys in the past that has iron oxides in it, but it actually doesn't have a tint to it. A lot of people don't want a tint. They're just fine with the sunscreen as is. So that one is another good one to choose because it's not really tinted, but you still get that good protection against visible light. A really cost-effective sunscreen though for your face is gonna be the Copper Tone Pure and Simple. Um, SPF 50. <clears throat> this one's great. It's zinc oxide only. Very sensitive skin friendly. It's moisturizing. It is a little shiny. I'm going to list down below in the description box more sunscreens that are good for you guys. I don't want this whole video to turn into just a bunch of my sunscreen recommendations. And some of them that I'm going to list down below are like really inexpensive, like four or five bucks. So check down there, but oh, one more though. <laughs> For those of you guys outside of the US, a tinted sunscreen that is really good is the Bioderma Photoderm AR SPF 50. Now this isn't a mineral sunscreen, it's a chemical sunscreen, but it does a really good job protecting against UVA, those rays that penetrate deeply and damage healing acne, and also has 
a tint to it so it will protect you against those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. So I recommend this for those of you guys outside of the US. I've talked about moisturizing your face, your body, greasing up your lips a ton. Let's not forget our hands though. They are gonna become very dry as well, especially in the current situation where we're really putting a lot of emphasis on hand hygiene, which is really important for reducing the transmission of infectious diseases. As we wash our hands though, we're stripping whatever residual oils there are on our skin. If you've got Accutane, this is gonna be really tough on you this period of time. So make sure you have with you a greasy moisturizer for your hands and put it on as soon after you wash your hands just to, just to keep on top of that. Every time you wash your hands, which is really important now, more so than ever, you're gonna to wanna to grease up your hands as well with a moisturizer. And one that's great for all day use is the uh, Neutrogena Norwegian Formula Hand Cream, fragrance free. The reason I like this is it doesn't leave a greasy residual on stuff. So that's really nice. Um, but check out my video on my top five hand moisturizers, hand balms, hand creams. I'll list that down below as well. The recommendations in there also are good choices. Now, the other thing that's gonna get really dry is your eyes. And it's important to have some preservative-free artificial tears. The reason I emphasize preservative-free, even though in all my videos I'm like, preservatives are great, preservatives are great. If you use eye drops more than four times a day, make sure they're preservative-free. The reason for that is that the preservatives in eye drops actually can be irritating um, to the eye if they're used more frequently than like four to five times a day. And when you're on Accutane, you're probably gonna be using the eye drops a lot more than just four times a day. Now, because there are no preservatives in these, I happen to be a fan and recommend you get the Refresh Optive Single Use Artificial Tears. I know it's not the most environmentally friendly thing, but the reason is that you don't want bacterial contaminants getting in the eye drops. It just reduces that risk. Also store them in the refrigerator. Another brand though of preservative free eye drops is Sustain, I also recommend those as well. But the recommendation to choose preservative free artificial tears goes for anyone, even those of you who aren't on Accutane, who happen to be watching this, thanks. Uh, if you use artificial tears a lot, say you have some other dry eye condition, if you're using them more than four times a day, you wanna make sure you get the, art, the, the preservative free one for the reasons that I mentioned. Not only is your, not only are your lips gonna get dry, your eyes gonna get dry, but your genital mucosa is also going to get dry. And this can actually be very uncomfortable. And it's something people don't bring up to their doctor. They just, you know, are embarrassed about it. But if you're a woman, you might experience some vaginal dryness. And male or female, you might also experience some dryness um, around the anus. And this can be very uncomfortable just in terms of day-to-day -day walking. When you go to the bathroom and wipe and whatnot, you might find that's uncomfortable. So I recommend getting yourself a personal lubricant in case you experience this and it leads to discomfort for you. Personally, I have uh, the Necessaire, the Sex Gel. I like this and I've recommended in other videos before. Now, this is called the Sex Gel. And because of that, I'm going to take this opportunity to remind you that if you're a woman, you cannot get pregnant while you are on this medication. It causes severe birth defects and you cannot get pregnant. You probably already know that at this point. If you're, if you're gonna be, get, be getting Accutane, you've probably been counseled on that. But I do wanna emphasize that if you're a woman, you cannot get pregnant while you are on this medication. And for one month after stopping, you cannot get pregnant. Uh, because of the risk of birth defects, and they are severe. So those are my recs. Thank you guys for sticking with me through this whole video, and I will list all these recommendations down below with a more comprehensive list of sunscreens at a variety of different price points. I know some of the ones I showed, up, showed here are a little on the more costly side, um, but you don't necessarily have to shell out big bucks. But I hope this video was useful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.